Hello everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm sorry. On Wednesday, I was not able to provide the lecture. So um, I apologize for that. So we are picking up this week on word problems. We have uh, not talked about word problems in quite a while. Um, previously, we discussed several kind of classical problems involving uh, certain relationships between two quantities. Um, so today we will talk about another huge classic class of word problem that involved uh, speed and distance. So a lot of uh, young students struggle with word problems involving speed. Uh, which is not surprising because um, there are many kinds of just tricky word problems involving uh, the concept of speed, which is um, a, essentially a rate or a ratio, which we will not formally discuss until um, next year in grade 6. But speed problems are so common in life, so we really need to understand um, how it works. Okay, so we will work through several uh, very typical word problems and then do a lot of exercises. Okay, so the key to understand and to solve word problem is to know this physical relationship among three related concepts, and that is time, distance, and speed. In real life, we do this every day, right? So when your parents drive you to the school or to some actual curricular um, enrichment program after school, or you go shopping, you go to a restaurant, you need to go anywhere, then you need to drive, and inevitably, there is a speed problem involved. So what is speed? So speed is defined through this relationship. You have an amount of time of your travel, and then you travel, not just say at a constant speed. If your speed just varies, that's just kind of just a complicated problem, but in all elementary school or middle school word problems, we idealize uh, the mathematical model and typically assume, at least over a relatively long period, you travel at a constant speed. So the speed we are talking about does not vary from, say, minute to minute or second to second. Let's just assume the speed does not change over a relatively long time. So you have speed, you have the travel time. When you multiply the two together, you get the distance of your travel. It's just that simple. So three um, quantities here, speed, time, and distance. And it's a multiplicative relationship. Remember we talk about a lot of our word problems involving this multiplicative relationship where you have three um, quantities. Or we, if we learn algebra, we would call them variables, but just three numbers. And they exhibit this multiplicative relationship. So two of them are multiplied together and get the third. And in this case, we have speed. Let's just say if you travel, your car uh, traveled at 60 miles per hour and you drive for two hours, how long did you travel? Well, that's simple, 60 miles, one hour, and you get two hours, so you traveled 120 miles. But it's important to understand how the units are defined in row three quantities. So distance clearly its unit 
it's some measurement of distance like a miles kilometers or meters depending on your specific problem it's just a distance measurement and time that's simple hours minutes seconds whatever you choose so that's also clear speed however we will see that speed is actually defined through distance and time in the division manner so clearly because of this multiplicative relationship speed will have to be distance divided by time therefore the unit of speed it's always defined through the two units that are for distance and time so essentially the unit of speed is something like miles per hour meters per minute or per second and so on it involves two units that are for distance and time respectively so the speed as a unit actually involve two other units and it's the ratio or through something we will call a fraction that relationship essentially the unit of speed is the unit of distance then divided by the unit of time and we call that composite measurement the unit of speed it's very important to have this concept so because we have three um, quantities here there must be another relationship because we need have two multiplicants uh, for the multiplicative relationship then we can get another relationship that is time is distance uh, divided by speed so essentially all speed problems require you to choose one of row three relationships and row three relationship essentially express fundamentally the exactly the same idea it just we have three different ways for representing this idea or this relationship so depending on your specific word problem you have to carefully decide which one you want to deploy in order to solve your problem sometimes you will and for more complicated problem you probably will need more than one such a relationship but fundamentally row three expressions are very easy to understand you have one multiplicative relationship then it generates two division relationship speed is this distance divided by time and time is distance divided by speed so this is the very fundamental thing but for whatever reason a lot of students struggle with uh, speed uh, related problems and it cannot be overemphasized that you need to really really understand those three simple relationship okay so that's the fundamental basic let's take a look of some of the typical classic word problems involving distance and speed so one class of problems involves a meeting between two parties so what does that mean so typically you have two guys or two entities they travel along the same road or route from two ends towards each other so in this case it's not just one party that is traveling you have two parties but the way they travel is that they travel toward each other okay and on the same route so then you have a problem how to calculate the relevant time and total speed and so on so but for this class of world problems it's fundamental to recognize that because the two parties travel toward each other let's just say 
let's graphically let's represent there's a route between two parties, let's just say A and the B, they travel toward each other. Okay? So in this case, our fundamental relationship has to be modified in order to accommodate the fact that now we have two parties and they travel toward each other. So how do we modify the relationship? That is easy. And now you have two speeds. One is for A, one is for B. So because they travel against each other, you can see that, say, uh, for every minute or every hour, A travel certain amount of distance, and B must also travel a certain amount of distance that typically is different from A's. So together, how long they traveled? Together they have traveled, of course, you just combine this amount of distance with this amount of distance, okay? But what is the formula for that? So the total distance that they traveled, which is here again in red, the total distance must be their combined speed, A speed and B speed, speed one plus speed two times the time that they travel together. So typically, um, they start at the same time. The problem can be more complicated if say one start sooner than the other. So you have to make accordingly make adjustment for that part of the information, but. If the two parties start at the same time, then the formula would be directly extended from the basic one to this. We just combine the two parties' speeds. So that's why speed one plus speed two. Okay, this is the typical way for um, those kind of just uh, problems involving meeting the two somehow because they travel toward each other at some point they will say meet somewhere here on the route because they travel uh, toward each other so this is called uh, the meeting problem okay so how do we generalize the other two uh, formulas with this type of problem well straightforward you just generate the same uh, division relationship. So in this case, the combined speed must be the total distance they traveled. Again, it's the total distance, okay? They travel together divided by time. They spend um, exactly the same amount of time because we assume they start at the same time and they meet. And uh, the total time they spend must be the total distance divided by the combined speed. So if in this picture I ask, in how much time will the two guys uh, meet? Then that must be, again, the distance divided by speed. But now because they simultaneously travel to get together against each other, the speed must be the combined speed. That should be uh, fairly easy to understand if we take a look at this um, um, diagram. Okay, so that's the problem involving meeting. There's another kind of twin class of uh, speed problem that involved chasing. So what is chasing? So in that case, the speed problem takes a different term. We still have, say, let's just say the same route here, the same route, but this time, instead of the two people travel, walk to, against each other, they are going in the same direction. Let's just say they both start at this end, both A and the B, travel toward 
this distance, uh, this direction, uh, toward the other end of the route, but they travel at a different speed. So typically, let's just say A starts sooner. So when B starts, A is already somewhere on the route, and A is still continuing his travel toward the other end. So the problem is that because B start be from the behind A, so there is a gap of their distance. And because now B must just travel faster than A so that B can at some point catch A. So let's assume this route is a bit longer so that we can make a better illustration. So because B walks faster, and walks from behind. So there is a distance difference that A needs to catch up A, right? So that's why it's chasing. But B travels, walks faster than A. So you can imagine at some point, they will meet again on the road. Maybe meeting is not the correct word. They will be at the same point because now B catches up with A. Okay, when that happens, what is the speed formula we should use? Clearly, B has traveled this much distance from his beginning point. And when B started, A was already somewhere on the road here, so the amount of distance that A actually traveled is shorter than B. And the difference right here is the amount of distance that B has to catch up with A. So in this case, how should we modify our basic formula? Well, kind of analogous to the problem meeting, but now, Instead of adding the two speeds together, we are taking the difference of that speed. In this case, speed one is the faster distance. Uh, in the diagram here, it's B speed because B needs to be faster than A. Otherwise, there's no way to catch up A, right? So if B can chase A and catch up with A, B must be faster. So here, speed one, is assumed to be larger than speed 2, so you can perform this subtraction, speed 1 minus speed 2. And then multiply by the same amount of time they traveled, then you get the distance difference. And in the diagram, that's what B actually catch up with say. It's this much distance, which is the distance different between B's travel distance and A's travel distance. So that's quite clear from this second diagram. So in this case, instead of simple speed, we take the difference between the two speeds and that correspondingly generated the distance, uh, the difference between the two distances that uh, they traveled. So the other division relationship can be similarly found. So the difference in speed is just the distance difference divided by the same amount of time they travel. And on the other hand, the time they traveled must be the distance difference divided by the speed difference. So all in all, it's always the fundamental three relationship, but they will have to be adjusted depending on your specific problem. And we are talking about two major classes of problem. One is a meeting, and that is when two guys just travel toward each other, and one is chasing. One guy is behind the other, and he needs to travel faster in order to catch up with the guy. Okay, so those two pictures should help you understand the fundamental uh, nature of this type of problem. And there's another typical problem when you have 
say, um, two different distances traveled by the same uh, person, then those problems involve so-called average speed. So what is average speed? What is average? Well, we take something, take a sum, then take a division, then we get the average. Let's just say you took three exams, you have three scores, so 80, 90, and uh, 96. What is your average score? You add row three up, divided by three. That's your average score in row three exams. So what is the average speed? Well, average speed actually is very easy to understand conceptually. Average speed is just the total distance divided by total time. Now we talk about speed kind of change, but typically the change is not continuous. So say you walk two uh, just a distance back to back, in the first distance, you walk at a certain constant speed, we call, say, speed one. And in the second uh, segment of the travel, you travel at a different speed, speed two. Now, what is the average speed? Well, you stick with the fundamental. The average speed must be the total distance you traveled divided by the total amount of time you spend. That is the average speed. The average speed is never a simple, say, speed one plus speed two divided by two. No, that's not the definition of average speed at all. So average speed is about, say, over a certain total distance and how much total amount of time you spend and you perform a division to get the average speed. It's extremely important to understand. Recently, I saw a guy just say, hey, what is the average speed? You got two speed, speed one and speed two. You add them up, then divide by two. That doesn't make sense at all. Because by definition, speed is the ratio or take a division, distance divided by time. And then when you talk about average, you must talk about the total distance and total amount of time, and then take the division. It's never by straight, uh, add the two speed numbers straight up, and then divide by two. It's never like that, okay? Now, let's do some real world problem. So, this first one, the Amtrak Railroad between New York and Chicago is about 710 miles. Train A travels from New York to Chicago at a speed of 60 miles, 68 miles per hour. And travel, uh, train B traveling in the other direction um, from Chicago to New York, but it departs at the same time as train A. So at a speed of seven four miles per hour. So in how many miles will the two trains meet? Clearly, this is exactly the definition we talk about in this meeting problem. Here, A and B, let's just say New York and Chicago, they travel against each other at the same time. And therefore, the total speed in this case is 68 plus 74, right? And this is their total speed, speed one by speed two. Now we need to know the, the amount of time. So the time is distance, total distance, which is um, 710 miles, I believe. This is the total distance. And this is the total speed. Now, what is the amount of time it will take for the two trains to meet? Now, just this relationship, okay? The total distance divided by total speed. And in this case, it happens to be, uh, I typically should write this way, turn the other line, make this more readable. So this will be 710 divided by uh, 142, okay? And 
you will get five. Okay. Always, always remember to attach a unit to a resulting numbers in the word problem because the unit is an absolute necessary requirement for we to make sure that our answer uh, uh, matches what expected. So this is how many, this is hours, okay? So you can certainly just write an H to represent hours because this is just for yourself or the reader to understand what you are, uh, what you are getting into, okay? So it takes five hours for the train to meet on the railroad. It's straightforward uh, application of the formula. Okay, so the ne next problem. Okay, almost like the same problem except we did some twist. So Amtrak Railroad from New York and Chicago is about 710 miles, we know that. Now, a cargo train, meaning a freight train, a train uh, just carrying goods or stuff, but not people. Okay, so a cargo train travels from New York to Chicago at a speed of 48 miles per hour. That's really slow, but maybe depending on the goods um, carried by the train, it may be necessary for the train to travel slowly, okay? Now, a passenger train starting two hours later and the cargo train travels again from New York again to Chicago at a speed of 64 miles per hour. So we get a second distance which is larger than the first distance and luckily this problem involves subtracting. Okay, so it will work. So in how many hours will the passenger train catch up the uh, cargo train. So that's exactly our second type of uh, problems in the, yes, in this, oops, um, so I will, I will do not this, oops, ha, oh, uh, what is this? Okay, I need to cut off this. Delete, yes. Okay, so this problem is exactly what we have here, right? Because the cargo train left earlier than the uh, passenger train. So when the passenger train started, it was two hours behind the cargo train, but both train are traveling in the same direction, that's right here. And then their starting point is also the same. Therefore, we know this is a chasing problem. And what is asked? So in how many hours will the passenger train catch up the cargo train? What happened when in that uh, case, so at the moment when the passenger catch up with the cargo train, what's the fundamental relationship there? The passenger train traveled longer, right? And how much longer? Well, essentially, it catch up how much distance for which he is behind or the train is behind. That must be two hours worth of distance for the cargo train, right? Because the cargo train left two hours earlier. So when the passenger train starts, the cargo train has already traveled a amount of distance. And that distance will be the difference between the two trains travel distance. And how much that di uh, distance is must be 48 times two, right? The cargo train at a speed of 48 miles per hour, and for two hours, the train must have traveled this many miles. Okay, when the catch up occurred, we have to look at the what? Speed one 
minus speed two. That's the speed difference. In this case, the passenger train travels faster than the cargo train, and their speed difference is 72 minus uh, uh, 64, I'm sorry, 64 minus 48. Okay, so um, this is the distance difference and this is the speed difference, meaning speed one minus speed two. So in how many hours uh, the, uh, will the passenger train take to catch up the cargo train? It must be this distance difference divided by speed difference. So therefore, we get this one. This must be uh, the amount of time for the catch up to occur. So this is just 96 divided by uh, 64 minus 48, that's 16. So we get six, okay? So always remember, attach a unit, otherwise nobody knows what six means, six hours? Six years, six light years, we don't know. So you better attach a, a, a unit. And in this case, it's time, so it's just hours, okay? Six hours. It will take the passenger train six hours from behind uh, to catch up the, the cargo train, all right? So this is also a straightforward application of, uh, of the, the, the general formula we talked about. Okay, um, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry, um, I need to take some water. I talk just too, um, just so energetically. Uh, I will be right back. Here we go. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, another problem. Okay. Um, so this problem, Albert and Anina run on a 400 meter circular track. You know, that typ a typical track and field track will not be circular, right? It will be something like, um, it's not real circular because there will be two, um, there's a parallel straight tracks. Now you have the half circle or kind of just an arc at the end. But for our purpose, we just presume that makes things a little bit easier. It doesn't really matter, same thing, but we say circular track. So two young students, Albert and Anina, they run on a 400 meter circular track. They start running at the same point, meaning same location on the circular track. So let's assume this is circular. Somehow the track is something like a here, a circular track. And they start at the same point in the same direction around the track. Albert runs eight meters per second. Well, Anina, the girl, is a little bit slower, runs seven meters per second. So how many seconds will pass before they meet on the track? So what does this problem mean? Well, you have two young students. They start at the same point. They run in the same direction. They start at the same point at the same time. But 
one runs faster, that's the green, uh, that's our speed, uh, it runs faster. Because they start at the same time, at the same point, so essentially, immediately after they start, Anita, the girl, will be behind the boy, Albert, right? So it's kind of, at the very beginning, Albert will be like a, a hat. So it sounds like Adina is chasing Albert because Adina is behind, but that will never happen because you, it's already, you're already slower. So how can you catch up Albert? But if, because this is a circular track, you can think about the other ways that right at the beginning, say Albert is here and Adina is, uh, let's make green to be Albert, Albert is here, but Adina is from behind. If you think about the other way, it's like Albert is way behind Adina, almost a full circle behind Alina. You can think about that way. So is this a meeting problem or a chasing problem? Clearly, it's a chasing problem. So the problem is that how many seconds will pass before they meet on the track? That means that um, they meet on the track again will be actually Albert coming from way behind Alina, catch up Alina, say, at some point, let's just say, at this point. What happened when they meet again on the track? That means that Albert will have run one full circle more than Alina, right? Because they start at the same point. When they meet again, that means that Albert has just run one full circle more than Anina has. So therefore, this is actually a chasing problem. Now we know how to do that. So what is the um, formula for this? Because it's asking for time. So we know the formula, the concept is very simple. You figure out the distance, you figure out the speed, and what is the dis distance? It's the distance difference. In this case, it's just one full circle. So that is 400 meter. Um, where is my, oops, yeah, right here. So in this case, the distance is just 400 meters. And we know we need to get speed. What is speed? So now the speed, it's just the difference between the two students, right? Albert runs at 8 meters per second, while Anina runs 7 meters uh, per second. So therefore, the distance, uh, the speed difference is just 8 minus 7. Albert is 1 meter per second faster. And now, how much time will it take to our to make up this one full circle? That will be simply the total amount of distance difference divided by the dif difference in speeds. Therefore, this will be just 400 divided by one. Of course, that is 400. And what is the unit? Well, clearly, it's just seconds. So it will take 400 seconds. That translates about six minutes and 40 seconds, right? So it will take 400 seconds for Albert to meet Alina again um, on this uh, circular track. So the problem is just key is to recognize that fact that because they start at the same point, at the same time, essentially, Albert also, right at the beginning, Albert is ahead of Alina. It's effectively the same thing as Albert is one full circle behind Alina. Okay, and this is a chasing problem. Okay, 
That's how it works. <laughs> Next problem. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Albert and Anina once again they run on a 400 meter circular track. They again start running at the same point and at the same time. But this time around, they run in opposite directions. Unlike in the first problem, they do not run in the same direction. That means that um, they will have a different uh, model here. So because they run in the opposite direction, so our now runs Oops. Um, let me just wipe out. Oh, okay. That, that's fine. Let me read your circle all together. So uh, this is the circle. Now Anina runs in this direction, but Albert runs in this direction. Okay. So they still run at the same speed. Albert's eight meters per second while Alina is 7 meters per second. How many times will they meet in the first five minutes of their runs? We have to understand what the problem is saying, right? How many times will they meet in the first five minutes of their run? What does that mean? Well, what do they mean about they meet? Well, now it's like this. <coughs> because they are running in opposite directions, you can think about this problem like a, you straight out the circle, flatten it like on a straight line. You just pull a full circle, straighten it into a line segment. That way, they would, as if they start at two end of the line segment and rounding toward each other, right? So that means that at some point, they will meet on this circular circle at this point, but at that time, Alina would have run this much distance while Albert has run this much distance. And that's exactly what we are seeing here. If you imagine you straighten the circular circle track into a straight track, then they effectively are running in that fashion. So when they meet, they will just finish this process. And we know that's a meeting problem, and we know the formula for that. It's just speed one plus speed two, that's the total speed. We know that. But the problem didn't say in how much time they will meet. That would be quite straightforward, just like a, in the earlier problem, Chicago train and the New York train, they meet. But in this case, the problem is how many times will they meet? All right? That means that they will just, not just meeting once, but multiple times. The, the reason for that is that after they meet, they will continue running. So as if they have moved their starting point from this position, to this position, they will do the same thing again, just starting at a different location on the circular track, they will continue to run against each other, toward each other, and then they will meet another time, probably next time they will meet again will be somewhere, say, around here, and they will continue doing that, running against each other again, then meet for the third time, and so on. So the problem is not just asking us to get the time it takes for them to meet, but 
we let us count how many times they will actually meet. That it's really a problem asking us to figure out within a certain amount of time they will how many times they will meet. Okay? So how many times will they meet in the first five minutes of their rounds? What does that mean? Well, in the first five minutes of their rounds, they will run together. Forget about whether they will meet or not. They will meet, uh, they will run five minutes. At that time, how much distance will they run? In total? Well, because this time the speed has to be add up 8 plus 7, that's their total speed, speed 1 plus speed 2, they will run for a total amount of 15 meters per second, but say first 5 minutes, so you have to times that by the amount of time, which is 60 seconds times 5 minutes, so 300 minutes in total and this is 15 times 300 that give us 4500 or 4500 meters they will run right so they will have run that much distance for the first five minutes and we want to know how many times they will meet every time what happens when they meet whenever they meet they just finish one actual full circle together right from the first meeting to the second meeting or from the very beginning to the first meeting every time they meet they together combined finish 400 meters. So this problem is asking you within this much distance, how many 400 meters are there? Because every 400 meters together, running together, the total, every total 400 meters, they will meet for once. So if their total distance is 4,500 4, meters, how many times they will meet? Essentially, every 400 meters, they will meet once. If you have this many, then that is really 4,500 divided by 400, and we will have to carefully do this to make sure that we do exactly what is required. This cannot be perfectly divided because every 400, 400, 4,000, then 4,400. After 4,400, they will have made 11 times and there's a remainder of 100. So this cannot be perfectly divided. There will be a remainder. But remember, in one of the exercises that we say that we should not use the notation like this equals to 11 and the remaining 100. No, don't do that because this is not good. Even whatever your teacher taught you or even some books taught you to write something like that, this is unmathematical, okay? Because we don't know what this symbol means. Yes, we really mean when 4,500 divided by 400, you get a quotient 11, and then you have a remainder 100. A better mathematically correct way to write this is to write this as 4,500 equals to 400, times 11 plus 100 and we understand this represents the remainder and this represents the quotient when you do. This is 
uh, operation called division with remainder, right? Because it's not a perfect division. But uh, just this is about notation issue. Make sure that you understand this. So the problem for this here we solved is that 11 times because this is a kind of just convoluted way of stating the hidden speed distance problem. We are not trying to get time. We are first trying to get a total distance. The total distance they run together and then every 400 meters they will meet once. Okay, so this problem is considerably harder than the last one. Next problem. Okay, starting at the same time, Aaron and Albert hiked toward each other from the two trailheads of a straight trail. So this is just um, our the very beginning of the problem, where you have a route. They Albert and Aaron travel in this case hike toward each other. Okay. After four hours, they meet at the point. Oh, Aaron walks faster than Albert. Not surprising, Aaron is a little bit older, two years older than Albert, so he's stronger, faster. After four hours, they meet at a point that is six kilometers from the middle point of the trail. Okay, how much faster did Aaron hike than Albert? So, what is the problem here? The problem is how much faster did Aaron hike than Albert? Is this a meeting problem or a chasing problem? Sounds like a meeting, right? Yeah, they walk toward each other. But be careful, math is never for you to memorize certain patterns, rules, formulas, equations, or tricks. You have to have a fundamental understanding of the nature of the problem. And that's why we emphasize at the very beginning, you have a deep understanding of row three relationship, speed, time, and distance. One multiplicative and two divisional. That's the basic concept. But for this problem, it's a meeting problem or a chasing problem? It's actually a chasing problem. Why? Because the problem says that when they meet, they meet at a point that is about six kilometers away from the middle point. We don't know the distance, but we know there's a middle point, meaning that you get half half of the total distance, and that's that's say that's the middle point. But they did not meet at the middle point, which wouldn't make sense because they hike at different speed and they say start at the same time. They cannot meet at the middle point. They must meet at a point that is away from middle point, and that away is by six kilometers. But let's just say this is Aaron, this is Albert. Where exactly did they meet? Is somewhere here or here? Well, the problem says that Aaron walks faster than Albert, right? So it would make it wouldn't make sense if they meet at this point. Because if that's the case, Aaron will walk a shorter distance than Albert, but he walks faster. So it must be at the other and um, side of the middle point. So the problem says that this distance is six kilometers. Now by this point, what do we know? They start at the same time. They walk in different speed. And the total amount of time is for an hour. So this is essentially say, after four hours, Aaron has walked twice this much distance than Albert, right? 
because our burst distance is actually in this this is the meeting point that's marked with red dot so our bird actually has walked this many uh, kilometers Aaron on the other hand walked or hiked this much distance but the difference because of this symmetry this is six kilometers from the middle point so this is what Aaron actually walked more than Albert did right because it's easy because this is the middle point and by symmetry you get another six kilometers here and this distance must be exactly as what Albert has walked therefore when they meet Aaron has walked this much distance more than Albert did which is easy to see that is six times two equals to 12 kilometers but this distance is not their total distance this is the distance difference so this is kind of a, a chasing problem but presented in a meeting fashion if you think this is a meeting problem you are tricked really this is a chasing problem it just they chase logically chasing but chasing in a different fashion because what in, what's important is that the essence here is that they got traveled they have traveled a, a different amount of distance with a difference in speed in four hours Aaron has traveled six times two equals to 12 kilometers more than what Albert did and if we divide this distance difference by the total amount of time that must be the speed difference so essentially like we chasing but break it down the two flap reflect one to the other end we just do a flip scene this is a typical chasing problem chasing problem but we flip this one to this end something like this okay and this guy is just in this direction okay um, no I should have put this direction this way um, it's just this direction okay so that becomes what happened in the this is a logical chasing problem but in this reality it's actually Albert start walking from the other trailhead so don't be confused this is truly a chasing problem rather than a meeting problem the total distance in uh, difference in distance six times two divided by the total amount of time so that's their speed difference which is three the unit is kilometer by per hour make sure that you always always attach a unit to your answer because otherwise we don't know what that means the speed is three three what three meters per second three miles per hour we don't know you have to attach a unit to your answer and the answer to this problem is that Aaron walks three kilometers per hour faster than Albert okay next problem okay the time is up but we will finish the other problems okay next problem again a cargo train travels from San Francisco to San Diego at a speed of 65 miles per hour it's pretty fast a passenger train traveling on the same railroad and departing at the same time as the cargo train travels from San Diego to San Francisco at a speed of 75 miles 
So if we have to draw a diagram, it's still like a meeting problem. So this is San Francisco, this is San Diego. A cargo train goes this direction from San Francisco to San Diego at 65 miles per hour, while the passenger train goes to this direction at 75 miles per hour. Okay? So, uh, when they meet, we know they will meet somewhere at some point. Um, uh, the passenger train has traveled 40 miles more than the cargo train. I think that's a typo, that's a more than uh, here. Um, I will fix it. So that means that when they meet at this point, the passenger train traveled a little bit longer than the uh, San Francisco cargo train. That makes sense. It travels at a fast speed. But what is that distance difference? Uh, oops. It's 40 miles. So this is really the distance difference. Okay. And what is distance of this railroad? Uh, what? Okay. So we know they travel together. We know their combined speed. We just need to figure out how much time they took to meet, right? Because if we know that, we will know the total distance between San Francisco and San Diego because we do know their combined speed. In this case, 75 plus 65 is 140 miles per hour. That's their total speed. So remember, you have to use those three formula in the correct way. In this, time, uh, in this case, we want to know the total distance between San Francisco and San Diego, and we know their combined speed. This is a meeting problem. We just need to know the time they took to meet. And how do we know? Because now there's another hidden condition there the San Diego train, the, the passenger train traveled 40 miles more than the cargo train. Why? Because the passenger train is faster. But how much faster? It's 75 minus 65. That's their speed difference. But if this speed difference divides the total distance difference, which is 40, this will give you the amount they took to meet, right? Just like in the previous problem, while the overall pattern is like they're meeting, but the hidden conditions provide to you, it's a chasing problem in the sense that the San Diego train travels at the faster speed and Every hour, the San Diego passenger train travels 10 miles longer than the San Francisco cargo train. And in a certain amount of time, their travel the distance will grow. And we know now when they meet, that distance grew to 40 miles. Therefore, it took them 40 divided by 10 equals to four hours for they to meet. Therefore, the distance between San Francisco and the San Diego must be this combined speed, 75 times uh, plus 65, then multiplied by four. This is 140 times four, it's 560 miles. If you write a one step of uh, just an expression for this, it's the total speed times the time they took. It's really just like that. It's a little bit convoluted, but this conceptually, it's quite easy. And actually, it's easier to see the logic in this expression, then the multi-step, we have took two steps. First, get the time, then get the total distance. While this is 
pretty good. You still don't see the connection between the first step and the second step. When you write a one step expression, you force yourself to see the logic. 75 plus 65, that's their combined speed. 75 minus 65, that's their speed difference. Because within four hours, or within certain amount of hours, they generate the traveled difference in distance. Therefore, if this is the, in this uh, parenthesis is the time, then finally you times the time with the combined speed, you get the distance between San Francisco and uh, San Diego. Okay? So, uh, one last problem for today. Okay. Well, during the Russian-Ukrainian war, we know it's ongoing. The Ukraine army is chasing the fleeing Russian army after major victory. Okay? The Russians fled at 1 p.m. at the speed of 50 miles per hour. You know, the Russian tanks are pretty slow. So, the Russians fled at 1 p.m. at the speed of 50 miles per hour, while the Ukrainian army started chasing. They got the info fairly late. They started chasing the fleeing Russian army at 6 p.m. on the same day, meaning that five hours later, the Ukrainian army started chasing the fleeing um, Ukrainian army. But at a speed at 20 miles per hour, look, this is from a point that is 10 miles away from the Russian starting point, which makes sense, right? In the battlefield, the two armies will never be at exactly the same point, because in that case, that would be just kind of unimaginable in the modern war. They will not be facing each other right at the same spot. They, when they fight, when they fire, they are just uh, ammunition. They are still kind of apart. And that's where they start fleeing and they start chasing. So when they start chasing the Russians in the route, the Russians right here fleeing away. And when the Ukraine started chasing, they are start at the point that is 10 miles away from the Russian. Okay? The problem is that the Russians start earlier. So the problem is in how many hours can the Ukrainians catch up the Russians? This sounds like a, we need to figure out the time, right? So we need to learn the speed and the distance. Then we get time. Distance divided by speed. But what is speed? What is distance? Well, this is clearly a chasing problem, no doubt. So we need to figure out the distance difference and the speed difference. The speed difference is quite straightforward. One is 15 miles, one is 20 miles. So the speed difference is clearly 20 minus 15. And what is the distance difference? Well, in this case, you have to read the problem a little bit carefully. The Russians fled at 1 p.m. The Ukrainians start chasing at 6 p.m. on the same day. That means that when the Ukrainians start chasing, the Russians had, had already fled for five hours. And with the, their speed of 15 miles per hour, they had already run 15 times 5, which came from 6 minus 1. This is the amount that Russian traveled when the chase began. But you have also have to add the initial distance between the Russians and the Ukrainians on the battlefield. And that is 10 miles. So the total amount of distance that the Ukrainians have to catch up is this 15 times 5, 75 plus 10. So this is really 85 divided by 5. 
It will take 17 hours. It will take 17 hours for the Ukrainian to catch up the um, uh, Russians. So if you do them at 6 p.m. plus 16 hours, wow, that's 12 plus 5. So it will be 11 a.m. the next morning. They chase the whole night and the whole morning Ukrainian will catch up the Russians the next morning at 11 uh, a.m. But this is not what asked. It's just how many hours can the Ukrainian catch up. So the answer is 17 hours. Make sure that you read the problem if necessary diagram it correctly. But most of the time for simple problems, you just need to diagram it in your mind. It helps to draw a real picture diagrams on paper, but once you have become really skillful at road scenes, easier problems, you can do that right in your mind. In this problem, it's not that difficult to say, and have two parts for the total distance difference. One is the physical distance, then the other is the amount of just distance that the Russians traveled, and they together constitute the total amount of distance the Ukrainians need to catch up. That's the total distance difference. Then divided by their speed difference, you get the time required. Go Ukraine! Okay, I will see you next week. Bye.